This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. So it's about that time, isn't it, AT? You do, what, like 50 hits with us and I'll do one with you? Is that how? Is that the equation we're going with? Yeah, yeah, oh, no doubt. I mean, and, you know, I will tell you guys, you know, a little bit of a, a bummer. Well, not a bummer, but I'll be traveling the next two weeks, Bill. So, one, I will not be on with you guys. But that means you're down to one this year because, you know, by the time I get back, I think the field for Omaha is going to be set. Obviously, I hope the Razorbacks are there. So maybe we will do a second one. But the regional and super regional weekends, uh, I will be away. Now, I'll be, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm going to have my phone by the pool monitoring every uh, Oregon State uh, Southern Utah game that you can imagine. But, uh, but you might only have to do one this year, Phil. So I'm, um, so I'm letting you off the hook a little bit easy this year. Where's, where are vacations this year for you in the summer? Because this is the only time you can uh, do it before, before like media days of college football and everything starts in a couple months. No doubt. And, you know, I'm grateful because I know even somebody like you, you don't even get most of June. You know, I, I always say, you know, really about mid-May to mid-July is kind of relaxation time for me. So, yeah, we'll be going to Mexico next week. Um, excited wife you know sister-in-law we're gonna have a good time you know drink a lot of cold beverages and then uh <laughs> um i come back and actually i always do a guy's trip to, to vegas and it just so happened that this year just the way the schedule fell they basically fall back to back now i'll be home for like a day or two in between uh but by this time next friday i'll, I'll be uh on a beach with a drink in my hand and by the following friday uh, i'll be waking up uh, probably around this time uh, with, you know, probably a drink in my hand as well. So, in a, a casino tiger somewhere. In the room too, of course. It's just how things work. And, and a tiger in the room and a ticket and a winning ticket from, because I bet Arkansas the previous day in that college baseball, uh, I guess it would be the super regional by that point. So, yeah. Smart move. Smart move. Hey, well, how about this? A year from now, we're, we're going to, and we're already going to be talking about it, I guess in the next year, this is what, this will be some one of the things that dominates over the conversation of college sports with the settlement from the Power Five schools yesterday, and it sounds like they're kind of strong-arming the lower-level Division One conferences. Um, next year, you know, once you get into the 2025-2026 college athletics calendar, schools are paying players. Uh, and I know. It, I mean, look. I mean, look at look at all the other things going. on. We're talking about a uh, a former quarterback recruit suing the coach who had recruited yep. him. We're talking about private equity now potentially uh, putting credit in to schools' athletic departments. Potentially now the st- now the schools are going to pay the players, man. And as everything is changing, everything is changing, and it's after everything's already changed for the last four or five years. Well, yeah, and no doubt, and you know, listen. Um, it's, it's changed so much, um, and I think, you know, we had to get to this point. Now, what I'm curious about is, you know, what is to stop a collective or whatever um, from, you know, Phil Elson, the five-star quarterback, just because he's making a certain amount of money from, you know, the, the collective bargaining or whatever we're calling it, revenue sharing, I guess is the right way to put it. Um, I don't think it stops schools from, from overspending on other guys as well. So I'm curious what that looks like. But, you know, we had to get here, Phil. And, and, and you know, I, I don't think it's like a, a shocking thing for me to say that, you know, we couldn't just keep going on with collectives basically funding the whole team. That wasn't a sustainable model. I know that at a school like Arkansas, at a school like Ohio State, at Miami, at whatever, you, you know, you're fortunate enough to have some high-level boosters that want to help support the school. But when we're talking about so many football players and we're talking about the money that was coming in for basketball this offseason, there's just only so much money to go around. And I know sometimes you think it's uh, a never-ending pit, but, but again, even at the biggest schools, uh, it isn't. And so now some of the onus, quote-unquote, is off the boosters, um, you know, and, and, you know, and I think it's going to, it's, we've already been heading towards a professional model. I think it's only going to continue. And I think, you know, a lot of the this, this stuff, you know, some of the perks, some of the facility stuff, blah, 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 it might go to the wayside to help the players. But that's the world we live in. This is where we were headed. Um, and it's probably, ultimately, probably best for everybody in college sports. Well, we continue to wait on finishing touches on Arkansas 
men's basketball roster. It's been it's been a couple weeks. Uh, still haven't heard anything from DJ Wagner. I think Kentucky's still waiting too. And it's this, you know, like any move that Arkansas makes, you, you're, you're always looking at what Kentucky does too, and I mean, the programs will be tied together because of the last couple of months, really. But you know, we're we're still waiting because I think what do you got eight players right now or seven players, and you're still waiting for another two. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I I still think DJ Wagner. I understand, you know, I don't know if it's trepidation as much it's just, you know, you know, the, the gift pointing at the clock waiting for for for, for this to all happen. Um, I, I understand the whatever emotion it is that you just want this done. I, I still think it's gonna be um, Arkansas and it's for a few reasons, most of the obvious ones, the relationship with both, you know, the family's relationship, not just if people forget, and I'm sure you've talked about it, but, you know, it's not just Calipari, it's Kenny Payne, too, the the, the 50-year relationship at this point, 40-year relationship with D.J. Wagner's grandfather, Milt. They were teammates at Louisville. So I think it's going to get done. You know, I've said consistently, and I probably even said it on this show last week when we were even on D.J. Wagner Watch last week, is that he's just never been the type of kid that, you know, does a million interviews, and I, I keep saying it, but he's not the kid that does the Joe Tipton, here's my top 10, then here's my top three, then here's my top two, then I'll make my announcement at 5 p.m. on YouTube. Like, it's just, it's just not how he's ever operated. And so I think it gets done. Obviously, I think it has to. And then really quickly, I, you know, I'm just curious where Cal goes from there. Is I know that he wants to keep a, a slimmer rotation of, I guess what he believes to be impact players, um, but I, I do still think you got to find some guys in the back end of the portal. Maybe maybe some high school recruits, I guess, in theory, because um, obviously you know you can't you can't go into it with just eight players. Uh, you can't even run a full practice at that point. So so I, I still think there are guys in the portal that would love to come to Arkansas, be a part of that program, play in the SEC, play for a Hall of Fame coach. But I am curious how he fills out at least scholarships nine and ten. Uh, and we'll see if he gets to 11, 12, 13, et cetera. So, so with, with, with the change in college sports and, and you, you already have NIL payments, but you're, you're going to, you're going to get a, you're going to get to a place where um, players are paid by the school through this revenue sharing. And there can still be third party NIL deals that go along with this. Now I'd said I think you even brought it up when we talked to you last week or the week before. Um, one of the one of the teams in the G League that has been designed for high school players to step in there. I think the Ignite is folding. Um, mm-hmm. These things seem they have to go hand in hand. You know, are we are we going to get to a place where there might be a little more of an influx of the the younger? I guess the word would be a little more highly talented players coming in rather than looking to get to the to the lower levels of the pros immediately after high school. Do you think that'll happen? Um, yeah, you know, and, and I think, you know, and and I think that we're already seeing it now, even with the NIL as it is where, you know, usually this time of year, Phil, the the NBA draft deadline is next week. It's, It's May 29th, Wednesday, May 29th, where if you want to play college basketball next year to be NCAA eligible, you have to remove your name. Uh, from the NBA draft by May 29th, which is next Wednesday. And it's weird because it's usually this big thing where there's a million kids and it could swing 10, 12, 15 teams. And this year it feels like there's a few. Mark Sears is part of that, whatever. But it's not as many as I seem to remember. And I just think it's because, you know, the kids that are on the fence could just say, I'm going to come back and play college basketball. I'm going to get NIL at, you know, like a – as an example, like the Jonas Adu, I think, you know, three, four years ago, third-year guy, kind of second-team All-SDC, whatever he was, he probably just sits there and says, you know what, i got to go make some money somewhere. John L. Davis, I have my degree. I'm just going to go make some money. And now it's like with NIL, it's allowed these guys to come back. So I think we're already seeing it. Um, and I think it's only going to continue. By the way, on the football side, you know, there, there were a lot of guys, especially at the quarterback position, that, you know, I could be a fourth, fifth-round pick, but – uh, you know, I'm going to make more money playing at Ohio State or playing at fill in the blank school, whatever. If I just come back, so I think we're already seeing the repercussions, and I do think that is an unintended positive of the NIL era. Is I think it's keeping a lot of kids in college that maybe would have considered 
going pro otherwise. And so, it, you know, it's fascinating how all these things have both positive and negative unintended consequences, but that's one. And now that the schools are more involved, uh, I, don't, I actually don't expect that to slow down anytime soon. Aaron, give me three guys that went to the G League and that are having success in the NBA. And I mean, really, like all to, all-star type of success. Because I can't think, I mean, Scoot Henderson went to Portland. I know it's his rookie year, but give, give me three guys that have went to the G League, what, chose that route. Dante Exum, did he go to Australia and then kind of mess around and, and, and come back? But but give me three guys. Well, they don't exist, but, you know, I, I don't know it's because the program was a failure um, you know, it's funny, uh, the, the guy who was running the program the last few years, Jason Hart, was, uh, is, has since been hired as an assistant on Mark Pope's staff at Kentucky, and I actually think he did a good job with the program. Now, the program started, I think, in 2020 during COVID, so, you know, there's chances that those guys will develop. So, like a Jalen Green who's playing for the Rockets, Scoot Henderson, who you referenced, Matt, but they don't exist, and, and what I think it does speak to is, and this is going to sound weird, um, I think that, you know, listen, there's different rules in the NBA and and there's benefits to going pro younger. But I think for years we have undervalued how well college actually develops players for the pros. And I think the NFL gets that, but I think the NBA has decided that college is evil and this and that. And it's like, listen, if you go to Duke or Arkansas or Kentucky or UConn or any of these high-level programs, you're getting – First class, you know, nutrition, first class uh, travel. I mean, listen, think about how much the travel conversation has come up with the WNBA where Caitlin Clark probably hasn't flown commercial for probably four years at Iowa. Now she's flying commercial in WNBA. So I bring it up because I think we undersold the value of college basketball from that perspective. Nutritionist, masseuse, uh, meal planning, whatever, blah, 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 weight training, as opposed to going to play in, in, in Greensboro, North Carolina, in front of a gym of, of 1,100 people for a 24-year-old coach that, that that's trying to get to the NBA himself. So, yeah, you know, the, the program is over. I think it's I, – I mean, I can't say if it's for the best or not, but I, I just think that even when the program was going on, I said it at the time, I said it didn't make sense. It wasn't going to make money. And if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. But I also said I think we're undervaluing a lot of the things that college does that it doesn't get credit for, the stuff that we just talked about. You know, one thing I, that I didn't see reading about this settlement, and if we think that college sports is about to get to a place where, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little more settled and not so chaotic, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the truth yet because – uh, th- this is all this is all monetary stuff, and if we're paying the athletes, you know, a share of the revenue, they're being treated differently than other students on campus. So in this case, I uh-huh. can see where you could potentially find a way, maybe, to limit the number of transfers without sitting, and that doesn't go along with this. I didn't read anything about that in this settlement. This is all just monetary. It's not about freedom of movement to go play. You know, that's a thing that causes chaos as far as no doubt. rosters are concerned. And I guess that's something that's got to be addressed too. It's, I just don't think it's part of this settlement. No, and I, I, it gets to an interesting point where, you know, we keep talking about, you know, I keep seeing these articles about unionization and, you know, uh, uh, collective bargaining and players being employees. Okay, well, employees have certain, you know, rights or whatever, but they have certain responsibilities as well. And whenever anyone praises, oh, Dartmouth wants to unionize, it's like, okay, so what's going to happen when that dude averages 3.9 points per game and the coach knows they can get somebody better? Is, the, you know, is, is John Calipari allowed to walk into a locker room like the NFL and say, or Sam Pittman and say, hey, give me your playbook, it's over? You know, and, and I think those are still a lot of the questions that remain unanswered, Phil, is you know, the transfer portal element of it, the employee element of it where it's like, Again, can you cut players? Can you fire players? Um, I know that that stuff is sort of happening anyway where you kind of process kids out, but it's a little bit more under the radar. But can you just say, hey, are are we going to have, you know, like, uh, you know, like in the NFL, we have cut down day. Is there just going to be, is portal season now going to be cut season where, again, Sam Pittman says, you know, hand me your playbook. And so I just bring it up because I think to get to something a little bit more stable, Yesterday was important, but I also think there's still a ton of unanswered questions that I don't think yesterday uh, is is the end of something. I think it's probably 
you know, we're certainly further along than we were six months ago or two years ago or three years ago when NIL came to play. But to your point, Bill, there's still a ton of questions that, frankly, not only, you know, we want answered, they need to be answered uh, to get some sort of stability, hopefully, in this in this thing we're doing. AT, let's leave it there. Hope you have a great trip uh, to both uh, Mexico and Vegas, and we'll look forward to revisiting with you in a few weeks. All right, I'll talk to you when the draw comes out at some point next week. I don't leave till Thursday, so we got plenty of time to break down that field of 64. All 64 teams, every single one. I'm relying on you, Phil. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.